Hi, it's me, Sheena, and I'm going to discuss about the clinical practice guideline and the approach and treatment of urinary tract infection, infection in children in the Philippine setting. The target population includes children below 18 years of age. This is a recommendation in a Philippine setting, and this is intended for pediatricians, general practitioners, and pediatric caregivers. The child with probable urinary tract infection or the suspect are the neonates presenting with the clinical signs and symptoms associated with UTI, febrile infants below 2 years of age, and older children manifesting symptoms referable to UTI. In general, manifestations of urinary tract infections are non-specific. However, there are some signs and symptoms associated with UTI that are more common on a specific age group. The following is an algorithm on the diagnosis, workup treatment, and follow-up of children with urinary tract infection. History and physical examination should be taken, and a re- urinalysis should also be taken. Results suggestive of UTI may have positive leukocyte esterase or nitrite test. Um, Bacteria present in unspun gram stained specimen. Pyuria of more than or equal to 10 WBC per HPF. And a positive urine culture is suggestive of urinary tract infection. It is important to take the temperature since some patients may not have other symptoms aside from fever. If fever is absent but the urinalysis is positive, the patient may be given oral antibiotics and an ultrasound of the kidney, ureter, and bladder should be taken for further workup. In those with fever with other abnormal lab results such as CBC, CRP, BUN, creatinine, and blood culture, patients should be admitted and parental antibiotics via IV or IM route should be given. Ultrasound should be done and urology consult should also be done as needed. For outpatients taking oral antibiotics with good response after 12 to 48 hours, treatment should be completed for 7 to 14 days. For those admitted at the hospital with good response after 48 to 72 hours, you may shift to oral antibiotics to be completed for 7 to 14 days. However, if there is poor response after 48 to 72 hours, you may reassess the patients, do a repeat urine culture, shift the antibiotics based on the initial culture and sensitivity, or complete 7 to 14 days of IV antibiotic treatment. To aid us in the diagnosis of UTI, a complete history should be taken. History should include presence of previous proven UTI, constipation, voiding disorders such as incontinence, previous surgeries, especially pelvic surgeries, and ambulatory problem. A thorough physical examination is a must. The examiner should look for congenital defects that coexist. Back examination such as presence of dimples, hair tops in the lumbosacral area, indicating probable neuro- neurogenic bladders. Lower extremities must also be examined. And a thorough neurological examination must be included. And rectal examination is part of the physical exam. Urinalysis is the foundation by which every child with suspected UTI would either have further work up or put aside for observation. Proper collection of urine is the cornerstone of the algorithm. The requirements are the following. For infants below 1 year of age, a superpubic tap is recommended. A catheterized urine is a good alternative to obtain urine specimen. Midstream urine collection for a cooperative patient such as older girls, circumcised boys, or older boys whose poor skin is easily retracted. On initial urinalysis, gram stain on an uncentrifuge urine specimen has the best sensitivity and false positive rate. Urine dipstick has a sensitivity of 0.88 for the presence of leukocyte esterase or nitrite 
a false positive rate of only 0.04 for the presence of either leukocyte esterase of nitride. Pyuria has a lower true positive rate and higher false positive rate. For presence of more than 5 WBC per HPF in the centrifuge urine, the TPR was 0.67 and the FPR 0.21, whereas, whereas more than 10 WBC in uncentrifuge urine, the TPR is 0.77 and FPR 0.11. For urine culture, a suprapubic aspiration is considered positive if there is growth of urinary pathogen in any number. Exception is up to two to three times one two to three times one thousand colony forming units per m of, of, of coagulase negative staphylococci. For catheterization, febrile infants or children usually have fifty thousand colony forming units per per ml. It is an evidence of a single urinary pathogen. There is an evidence of single urinary pathogen, but the infection may be present with counts from more than 1,000 colony forming units per ml. A midstream clean void is considered positive in symptomatic patients who usually have 100,000 colony forming units per ml of a single urinary, urinary pathogen. In asymptomatic patients, it is considered positive if there are at least two specimens on different days with 100,000 colony forming units as path, um, of the pathogen. Routine reculturing of the urine after two days of antimicrobial therapy is generally not necessary if the infant or young child has had expected clinical response and the uropathogen is determined to be sensitive to the antimicrobial being administered. Ultrasonography alone as a workup for patients with proven urinary tract infection is inadequate. The use of voiding cystourethrography or nuclear cystogram evaluates the presence or absence of vesicourethral reflux. Vesicourethral reflux is the most common abnormality found in patients with urinary tract infection with, pre with prevalence of 30 to 40%. Here are some antimicrobials for oral treatment of UTI. And these are some antibiotics for parenteral treatment of UTI. And these are the antibio antibiotics for prophylaxis of UTI. That would be all. Thank you. And for more videos, please subscribe.